This video will more closely explore dilations, the last of our transformations. You might recall from our previous studies that a dilation is a transformation that will produce an image that is the same shape as the original, but might be a different size. Now, because dilations produce images that are the same shape, that means that the angle measures are preserved, or in other words, that the angle measures are kept the same. Now, a dilation will either stretch or reduce the original figure and will produce something that is similar to the pre-image. Similar meaning same shape, but maybe a different size. Whenever we're describing a dilation, it's important to include both the scale factor, which might be written as a ratio, and the center of the dilation. The center of the dilation is going to be a fixed point about which all of the other points are expanded, meaning made bigger, or contracted, meaning made smaller. It's important to note that the center of dilation is the only invariant point. In other words, the center of dilation is the only point which doesn't change, which stays the same. All right, I'm going to go ahead and we're gonna look a little bit more at centers and scale factors by looking at some examples. In number one, part A, it says, first of all, identify the dilation and find the scale factor. So if I take a look at the picture, the very first thing that I'm going to ask myself is whether I'm looking at a reduction or an enlargement. So when I look at the image, the image is going to be the big yellow triangle. The pre-image is going to be the small red one. So I notice that I've gone from something small to something bigger. This is going to have to be an enlargement. That's important for me to notice because whenever I'm dealing with an enlargement, the scale factor will always be greater than one. The way that I'm going to find my scale factor is I'm going to compare the distances of the pre-image and the image from the center of my dilation. So my pre-image is a distance two from the center of my dilation. The image is a distance six. I have to compare those two numbers in such a way that I end up with a scale factor that's greater than one. So I can either compare two to six, or I can compare six to two. This way is not going to result in a scale factor greater than one. So I know that my scale factor has gotta be the number that I get when I compare six to two. In simplest form, that scale factor would be three. The way that I'm going to identify the dilation is I'm going to start with a capital D, which is going to be our symbol for dilation. I must identify the center. In this case, the center is that point O, and I must identify the scale factor, which in this case is three. So this is a dilation using point O as a, z a center and a scale factor of three. All right, I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm going to employ the same strategy in order to identify the dilation for part B. I'm going to first look at it and I'm going to decide first of all whether it's a reduction or an enlargement. In this case, the original triangle using B and C is larger than my uh, new triangle. And I guess I should think about these as line segments as opposed to thinking about them as triangles. So segment BC is a larger segment than the prime segment, meaning that this is a reduction. And the fact that this is a reduction or we're shrinking the original image also tells us something about our scale factor. This tells us our scale factor is between zero and one. So in order to determine exactly what that scale factor is, just like we did for the first example, we're going to go compare those distances from the center. So one of the distances from the center is two, the other of the distances from the center is five. So my scale factor is either going to be two over five or five over two, but because this is a reduction, I need my scale factor to be between zero and one, making my scale factor two over five. The fraction five over two is the same as two and a half, which obviously means it wouldn't fall between zero and one. 
So when I go now to identify my dilation, this is a dilation, so I use that le capital letter D to represent dilation, using point O as my center, and a scale factor of 2 fifths. Now, one of the ways you may see the scale factor written is you may see it written as a fraction. The other way that you might see it written is you might see it written as a ratio. If we're, we were to see the ratio written for the first one, so for this letter A, we would see that ratio expressed as 1 to 3. And the reason is that when we write the scale factor as a ratio, we always compare the old measurement to the new measurement. So a scale factor of 3 is written as a ratio of 1 to 3. Scale factor of 2 fifths is going to be written as a ratio of 5 to 2. The old distance from the center was 5. The new distance from the center is 2. That can be a little bit tricky looking at those ratios. All right, if you don't have your compass and straight edge handy, now's the time when you want to pause the video and then hit play again once you've dug out your compass and straight edge. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dig out my compass. It says use a compass and straight edge in order to construct the following dilations. What we're going to do is use our knowledge of dilations together with our knowledge of constructions to go ahead and construct these. The first one says do a dilation of uh, with center at 0, or O, and a scale factor of 2 of segment AB. So the scale factor of 2 really means the new points will be twice as far away from that center as the original points were. So again, the new points are double the distance from the center of dilation as the original points were. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my compass, and I'm going to use my compass in order to measure how far point A is away from point O, that center of my dilation. I'm going to mark off an arc that's exactly the same distance away. Now my center, the point, and the image all need to lie on the same straight line. So what I'm going to do is extend that line from my center through point A until it intersects that green arc that I drew. I know now that A prime must be this, uh, the image of A after a dilation of scale factor 2 in the center of O. A prime is twice as far away from the center as A was. And I'm going to use that same idea now to go and construct point B. I know that O, B, and B prime all have to lie on the same straight line, so I'm going to go ahead and construct that line. I'll use my compass to measure the distance from O to point B. And then I want to measure that same distance again and draw an arc that intersects my line. And where that arc intersects my line is point B prime. So again, that scale factor of 2 means the new points are twice as far from the center of my dilation as the originals were. All right, the last example that we're going to take a look at together in this video also wants us to construct a dilation. But this one is a little bit different in that the scale factor here is a half. A scale factor of half means that each point is going to be half as far away from the center of dilation as the originals were. Still on the same straight line, but now only half as far away. So I'm going to start this by going ahead and connecting my center of dilation to each point in the original image. And if I want to find the location of a point that's half as far away from point O as the original, I'm going to have to split those segments into halves. So this, the construction I have that allows me to split, split segments into halves is the perpendicular bisector construction. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go construct the perpendicular bisector of each one of these line segments, segment O to A, the segment that connects point O to D, and the segment that connects point O to B. So that point where my perpendicular bisector intersects segment OA is going to be A prime. In order to do O to D, I'm going to switch colors up here because otherwise this construction is going to get a little bit messy. And that was close. The spot where the perpendicular bisector intersects segment OD is going to become my D prime. And I'm going to do the same construction, but this time I'm going to do this for the line segment that connects points O and B. Boy, I'm getting a lot of practice doing that perpendicular bisector construction. Now that I know where the locations of each vertex are, I can go ahead and draw those vertices in there. So again, it's important to note that that scale factor of a half means the new points are half as far away from the center as the originals. Scale factor of two means that the new points are twice or double the distance from the center as the originals were. As always, thank you for your gift of time and watching the video. You do need to spend some time summarizing the key ideas and the important takeaways that you need to remember regarding this video, and then see if you can apply your newfound knowledge in order to answer the questions on the next page.